<sighs> nice little intro hook. Okay, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go. Ready? And... Ah, <laughs> uh, hi, I didn't know you were coming today. Okay, am I good on my mark? My name is N.D. Wilson. I am the author of Boys of Blur, and I am here at the behest of Elizabeth Bird, one of the co-authors of Wild Things, Acts of Mischief and Children's Literature. And I've been asked to tell you some secret backstory to my recent book, Boys of Blur. So. <laughs> I originally wanted to write a story about boys chasing rabbits through burning sugarcane fields about five years ago. When I set out to write Boys of Blur, this story about football and burning sugarcane and boys chasing rabbits and being chased by monsters, I knew I actually needed to leave Idaho and go set foot in Florida a little more thoroughly than I had before. So I went, I took a camera and my cousin, and we rode in swamp boats. We chased snakes and went out to the canals at night very foolishly and tried to find gators and did all sorts of re research. One of the strangest, of course, was when my cousin, the videographer, actually fell off of a swamp boat into a, a pack of bleeding baby alligators who were all terrified and crying for their mother. Sort of that kind of thing, you know, lots of them. Big mama gators around, and he just sploosh. Mother didn't show up to eat him, but he did catch one. But I do have this lovely photo to show you. Crossfade. <laughs> and of course, we went to a football game. I hung out with the drum corps. <laughs> one of the biggest rivalry games in high school football in Florida, the Muck Bowl. But one of the most important things that actually happened for the book was when I met this retired football coach. Notice his rings, the heaviness of the rings on all those old fingers. Those rings signify championships. When you win everything, you get a ring. Now, this is when I really started settling in on Beowulf as the classic I was gonna be using for the Boys of Blur story. Because in Beowulf, the heroic code is really the operating worldview for the whole thing. The ring giver is the chieftain, the one who brings in the gold, the hardware, and distributes that hardware to his warriors. And here I am looking at this, this guy covered in rings, wearing all his rings to this rivalry football game. And the real theme of Beowulf is envy and resentment. Grendel envies the joy and the feasting and the celebration that the, the men have in the mead hall. And so I created Gren, Stanks, these monsters that envy what the people have, what the people have in this small town of Taper, Florida. A fictitious place. Beowulf is so very earthy, bloody, dark. And so is Boys of Blur. The muck of this place, the dark, dark black soil that the sugar cane grows in is really just a central character for me in this story. And it's a central character in all these kids' lives who actually live in this place. And then the language, the actual prose, the poetry of Beowulf, the rhythms, the guttural rhythms, the the rumblings of Anglo-Saxon was so much fun to imitate, although in a much softer modern English. If you take the opening lines, just the gruffness. Boom, boom, boom. What we got in on your dog and fed can you get him your frun and Monica made a made a I don't remember what comes next. I mean, are you hearing this? But if I had a, a stick of sugar cane right now, I'd just be <laughs> The language is so very chewy. It's like a bunch of gristle in your... <laughs> As soon as I saw the rings heavy on this old man's hands, I saw his smile of triumph. You know, he's, he's old and, and weak now, but he has won. He has been the ring giver. He has his legacy. I realized how much Beowulf fit with small town America and high school football. And that's why the two became one in my story, Boys of Blur. Do check out Wild Things, Acts of Mischief in Children's Literature. Available August 5th. Pre-order now.